Portable SSD drives are pretty commonplace now, but how do you DIY enclosures stack up against branded pre-built offerings? Let's find out. Hi everyone, this is Clembo from Zentech Life, where we love all things to do with lifestyle tech and gadgets. Today, I'll be looking at and comparing fast, affordable external storage, specifically NVMe M.2 SSD solutions. Nowadays, a typical base configuration from most laptop manufacturers starts with 256GB of SSD storage. But when you start configuring it with more storage space, you'll quickly find that most manufacturers charge a premium for it. The typical cost of upgrading from 256GB to 512GB ranges between $100 and $200, and if you want to further upgrade to 1TB, you will need to top up another $150 to $200. If for some reason you want to go beyond that, the jump from 1TB to 2TB is even more costly, starting at $250 with some manufacturers charging up to $400. That's a lot of money considering at the time of filming this video, some of the best NVMe SSDs such as the Samsung 970 EVO and ADATA SX8200 Pro can be purchased for as little as $75 for 500GB or $140 for a full terabyte. Depending on what laptop you have, you might have a vacant M.2 slot, which means you could expand your storage space yourself at a fraction of the cost that manufacturers charge. However, not everyone has the option to replace or add an SSD into their laptop, whether that's because it's soldered onto the motherboard, or simply they're just not comfortable with opening up their laptop. And so, that brings us to portable SSD drives. Thanks to the introduction of USB 3.1 Gen 2 and USB 3.2, yes I know, the current naming structure of USB standards is dreadful. The average consumer will find external drives are now plenty fast, offering transfer speeds of up to 1,250 megabytes per second, thanks to their 10 gigabit connections. So, even if you're editing 4K footage or running games directly from these, modern portable SSDs will keep up with your needs. Admittedly, these are less convenient than having extra storage built into your laptop, but it's definitely a cheaper solution which doesn't void your warranty by opening up your laptop. If you're still here, that means you're interested in increasing your laptop storage with a portable SSD drive. But what should you buy? Well, big brand manufacturers such as Samsung, SanDisk and Western Digital all have their off-the-shelf offerings. For the purpose of this video, I'll focus on their faster models, namely the Samsung T7, SanDisk Extreme Pro and Western Digital Black P50. These models are frequently rated as some of the best performing external SSDs as they're equipped with either a USB 3.1 Gen 2 or USB 3.2 port. These drives are also marketed as having transfer speeds of up to 1050 megabytes per second, or even higher. At the time of filming, the 1TB variants for these models come in at $160 for the Samsung T7, $190 for the SanDisk Extreme Pro, and $243 for the Western Digital Black P50. The Western Digital being the most expensive, claiming transfer speeds of up to 2000 megabytes per second, which is twice as fast as the Samsung and SanDisk drives. I myself own a SanDisk Extreme Pro, which works incredibly well and more than satisfies my needs for fast, affordable, portable storage. I ran some Blackmagic disk speed tests and it shows that it lives up to its claims, reaching over 900 megabytes per second on read and write speeds. However, there's another alternative to these big brand portable solutions, DIY enclosures, which are now easy to find and come in USB 3.1 Gen 2 and Thunderbolt variants. The great thing about these enclosures is the flexibility it provides the user with regards to the SSD size and speed that they can use. If we look again at the Samsung 970 EVO and ADATA SX8200 Pro, both these SSDs are capable of reaching transfer speeds of 3000 megabytes per second, meaning the transfer speed is actually limited by the USB connection and not the SSD itself. I have here the ADATA SX8200 Pro, which I've coupled with the Oracle NVMe M.2 enclosure. 
The Oracle enclosure costs $33, features a transparent plastic case and an aluminium heatsink on one side to help dissipate heat generated during use. Oracle also offers other variants where the entire enclosure is made of aluminium, which likely aids the passive cooling of the SSD. But I chose the transparent version as I personally quite enjoy seeing the internal components. It kind of reminds me of the old atomic purple Game Boy Color from my childhood. The Oracle enclosure utilizes a USB 3.1 Gen 2 connection, which should mean that it matches the transfer speeds of the pre-built drives from Samsung, SanDisk and Western Digital. But I'm a bit of a skeptic, so of course I ran Blackmagic disk speed tests again, and I'm happy to report that this combination also achieved over 900 megabytes per second in read and write tests. Adding up the $33 for the enclosure and $140 for the ADATA SX8200 Pro, we come to a total of $173. That's actually $10 more than the Samsung T7, but $17 cheaper than the SanDisk Extreme Pro. So it's not necessarily cheaper than a pre-built portable SSD, so why go DIY? Well, a DIY enclosure lets you freely swap out the SSD with any size you wish. So if you later purchase a 2TB SSD, it's a simple upgrade. Off-the-shelf drives such as the Samsung T7 and SanDisk Extreme Pro were not designed to have drives that are user-replaceable. Instead, they offer more ruggedness such as dust, water and shock resistance, which arguably is also a selling point for them. That's not to say it's impossible to replace a drive, it'll just be more difficult. It will likely void the warranty and may permanently damage the casing itself. Additionally, as I mentioned before, the SSD sitting inside the Oracle enclosure is capable of transfer speeds of up to 3000 megabytes per second, and the current USB connection is acting as a bottleneck. So, if in future I purchase an enclosure with a faster connection, then I can migrate the SSD into the new enclosure and utilize those faster transfer speeds. So, what should you buy? If you want a fast and functional portable SSD with added dust, water and shock resistance, and the idea of replacing the drive just doesn't matter to you, then the big brand manufacturers have you covered. However, if you want the flexibility to replace the SSD inside the external drive without voiding the warranty, then a DIY enclosure is an ideal choice. It also makes it much easier to upgrade to a faster enclosure in the future. Regardless of what you choose, they're both a much cheaper solution compared to configuring your laptop with more built-in storage. you notice I haven't really mentioned Thunderbolt 3 in this video, and that's mostly because the price for those drives is considerably more than the USB variants. However, if you do own a device that has Thunderbolt 3 and you really need the fastest transfer speeds, then there are other options out there. Just expect to pay a lot more for it. It's worth noting that you should definitely check your local prices for everything I've mentioned in this video, as regional pricing will also make a difference to your purchasing decision. For example, although I've listed the prices in US dollars via Amazon, I actually live in Hong Kong, where the Oracle enclosure and the ADATA SX8200 Pro is actually cheaper in my local currency. It's $20 cheaper than the Samsung T7 and $30 cheaper than the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Anyway, Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your comments, which you can leave down below. And if you liked my video, leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me about lifestyle tech and gadgets, then hit that subscribe button too. Thanks again, and catch you in the next one.